John Moore, our Special Forces Vietnam's forensic investigator and prepper consultant specialist, and our scientist, Dan Morrison. The uh, websites are thelibertyman.com, thelibertyman.com, and homeland-defenseforyou.com. I think uh, you have lots of information on there. It's really important, Dan. Um, we have also occasionally on Thursdays, Professor James McKinney may be calling in on Skype because he's often in a remote location doing lots of research. And, um, you know, I tell people, I said, we're not, we present a lot of information that's pretty freaky. And as I mentioned on the third hour of rents last night and in the first, uh, in the first part of hour two, the reason is people lack faith and hope. And faith and hope only comes from God when you deposit love. Love for God, love for your fellow man and your world. And people think they can manufacture faith or hope, and they can't. They distract themselves with sports, with addictions, with whatever. But the fact is a lot of people become viciously ignorant because they have the brains to understand and believe the truth, but they're empty shells. They're what I call spiritual zombies. And the only way to not be a zombie now is to actually deposit love and say, God help us. Get down on your knees in sackcloth and ashes and realize we're not going to have a depression. We're in it. We're not going to have an ecological collapse. We're in it. We're not going to have a future ice age. We're in it. We're not going to have a, uh, a government that's going to turn on its public and become makes its enemy combatants. They're ready. They just haven't taken the safety off yet. It's that close. You can hear the, the, the grunting and you can smell the sulfur of the dragon on her neck. So, and tell us the latest of what's going on. We've got the Chinese New Year happening and people returning from China with almost certainly super plagues. We have a government that last week got 26 nations with uh, a sponsor of the U.S. and $40 million in Obama, that they've got all these countries, including Russia, China, etc., all in agreement that they're going to hand over to the United Nations and WHO even more powers than the previous bills in 2006, which 193 nations signed. Uh, things are beyond the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. It's so crazy that even us who think that we're hard to deal with the news, we don't know if our heads are going to burst if we hear any more bad news. But without the Creator God, you can't. And definitely, the people out there that are ignorant by choice, not because they're stupid, they're insanely driven to attack the messenger because they can't deal with how ugly and how nasty and how much it requires them to become humble again and pray to the Most High God to deliver them from the disaster that's coming and is here on the doors. It's here. And we're not talking about a future thing. We don't have to be prophetic about this. We're in free fall right now. I mean, the economy's in free fall. As I say, they haven't deployed the airbags in America. The world ecological system with Fukushima's in free fall, and there's going to be much bigger earthquakes coming, so they're going to lose much more than that. And we have armed to the teeth the Israelis and Saudis to attack a live reactor with nuclear weapons. Now, if that isn't crazy, if that is insane, I mean, I, I, I shake my head. I mean, when I was a two-and-a-half-year-old, I'd say, Daddy, why would they do this? And I say now as a 62-year-old, Daddy God, deliver us. Because this insanity will kill mankind and everything on earth. We are on the march toward omnicide. Omnicide. Everything shall die. If we let Satan and his minions on earth, including politicians, corporate leaders, and idiots in every profession, from the legal to the medical to the geopolitical, in every realm, humankind is being led by the nose, by Satan and his minions down the maw of an open volcano of death and destruction. So, uh, and, and you know, um, I don't think, uh, I would say, if, if I was going to say anything, this year is the year of the first real major screamings to the top of their lungs, birth pangs of the time of Jacob's trouble. And if you look at the Tetrad of the Blood Blue Moons with Mark Biltz, it's my gut feeling, without setting dates, that almost certainly this year or next, the peace treaty will be signed and the abomination that will desolate shall be ratified and the only man on earth that can do that by rabbinic law from the 2007 scroll given to George Bush called the scroll of Bush by the Sanhedrin in Israel is our current usurper in the White House the narcissistic neuronic narcissistic satanic president the sock puppet for George Soros Obama Nokio 
our so-called president, the usurper in chief in the White House. This is that bad. And without faith and hope from God, you're not going to want to know the truth. You're going to spit fire at those people like John Moore and Ann Morris and myself. You're not going to wait to hear about the flu and about the ice age and about the death of the oceans and about the radioactive salmon and about the native peoples freaked out and not want to touch any fish and it's actually their main food or the death of the polar bears and the seals and the sea lions and huddled humanity along the coast terrified that they want to go they want to go picnicking on the beach or they want to go surfing not realizing they're breathing in and showering with death so uh and tell us more about what's coming because i can tell people you need to get it out there you need to not only get the truth but you won't absorb the truth through your spiritual skin unless you have jesus in you and you have the faith and hope that doesn't come made by man but made by the father as a gift once you deposit love and uh in valentine's day i'm telling you today out there we need to repent that's how we're going to get faith and hope and then we'll accept the truth that ann morrison and ann john are talking about and all the wonderful men and women in our military in our various agencies some of them are doing some pretty dark things but there's good people everywhere and even good politicians like mr cruz in texas who wants to raise questions about what the heck is going on and why are we doing it so, uh, and tell us more about what's happening. Well, there are a lot of things happening. Uh, I want to mention the storm over in uh, Britain. They had a uh, red flag warning. They're having tremendous flooding and high winds. Winds as high as 100 miles per hour. So, uh, Britain, yeah, the latest I heard it was actually uh, sustained winds in many cases of 108. And, of course, breaking records all around the Northern Hemisphere of 130-year records for snowfall. They literally, like uh, Robert Felix has said, who will be on next Tuesday, they have moved the weather from Chicago to Atlanta. That's quite a jump, isn't it? Well, you can see that in the jet stream. The jet stream normally, the northern jet stream usually circles the North Pole at uh, 60 degrees north latitude. And it's circling at about, well, I would call it 30 and so, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, and when they, they call it polar vortex, which really just moving the jet stream up, uh, down thirty degrees, which means we are in the cusp of a maybe not just a monitor type cooling period, but a true full full, full force ice age. My cake is in my cake is in the oven. Take it out. Oh, that's good. Sorry. Don't want your Sorry don't want your that. cake to go while you're on air. So, um, uh, so yeah, and I think John, you're there too, right, John? John Moore. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So you hear about the cake in the oven? Well, well, we're dealing with the oven. Why don't you give us an update <laughs> on what's going on? And Anne can take care of her cake, and we'll be, have her back in a second. Okay. Thank you. Well, Doctor Bill, thank you. Um, many of your listeners and my listeners uh, are students of history. I ran across a book that was only published six weeks ago. I'll give the title twice slowly since it's kind of a long title. Uh, Trans Evolution, The Coming Age of Human Deconstruction by Daniel Estulin, E-S-T-L-I-N. Uh, I heard an interview uh, with him and uh, Alex Jones and Ned, and Mr. Estulin is brilliant, and he he's been to many of these meetings, including the Bilderbergers, and you might think this is sci-fi. You get a bunch of sci-fi writers for Hollywood or the European film festivals. No, these are world leaders satanically energized, and this is what they believe. This is well, scary, well, Doctor, crazy uh, stuff. He, he answered that. Uh, now, I'm not. I'm a somewhat of a student of history. Not. I, I don't spend all my time doing it. But I wondered for quite a while, where did all the uh, the wealthy families of ancient Rome? Where did they go to? They didn't just disappear. Well, it turns out, according to Mr. Eschelin, quite a few of those very wealthy. I mean, wealth beyond belief. Roman families around 300 A.D. or so went to the island of Venice, which is in fact an island. In the yeah, yeah. northeast corner of Italy, yeah. and that that power and influence of those families has been behind the scenes influencing world events for the last seventeen centuries. Wait, right, they moved from the uh, Venezia, the black nobility, to the area of the of the uh, city square mile of the city of London. Absolutely, I call it Londonistine. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> These families and wealth and power have, have basically been uninterrupted for two millennium. Right. If you actually look at a statue of Nero, he is an absolute dead ringer for a twin, the great great granddaddy for Bill Clinton. Gives you an example. Welcome. 
Welcome back to the Nutri Medical Report. So let's finish with uh, John's report. John, what's the latest news you're hearing from, uh, as I say, like, like uh, uh, you know, Tonto with your ear against the rail or the ground to hear what they're doing with the buffalo? What's happening with the, the good people in our military and our different agencies without giving out names or ways of tracking back to them? What's the latest, uh, what I call, dark news from the other side? Well, I, I just got a report about four hours ago that uh, my hometown, St. Louis County, Missouri, is the St. Louis County Police Department is getting the same armored vehicles that are used in Iraq. They're called MRAPs. That's an acronym. Uh, special heavy armored uh, wheeled vehicles that can uh, withstand uh, an explosive device underneath them with no harm to the people inside. They're also right. purchasing uh, 50 caliber rifles, uh, which are also used in Iraq and stand for a long distance sniping uh, and that's happening as we speak now uh, the, the questions would be well I'm going to go back to my um, this is my today's my my uh, day before my birthday which is midnight Valentine's tonight so as a 62 year old I'm now a two and a half year old again I'm going to ask the daddy questions are daddy why would they buy those bullets and why would they need those vehicles this isn't Iraq this is Missouri or North Carolina or California and I thought the people of this country were nice people I didn't think they needed those kind of vehicles or bullets daddy why would they do that well they're doing it because there's a perceived need uh, right. and, and, and would that mean that the American public has not been perceived as an enemy combatant well I don't I don't see where the second choice <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. Um, it's one of those questions which is a multiple choice question, but there's only A. There's not A, B, C, D, or A right. and B, or C and D. There's only a question where the only answer is A, and all you have to do is put a little dot on the A, and you get it right. That's right. And uh, th these, you know, I've, I've been, you know, I've been in this career path for 41, 42 years now. Uh, I, I going all the way back to the Nixon administration, the LEAA, Law Enforcement Assistance Administration. I've been seeing this uh, uh, over the past four decades. The uh, continued uh, militarization and uh, uh, equipping of armed police like the military. It's been ramped up dramatically, though, the last uh, seven, eight years since uh, Obama has come into office. Well, it's not just Obama, by the way. I have contacts in Alberta. When they had that big floods and major problems in lower Alberta, there's a town down there where they brought in, they kicked out the 100 and some uh, local RCMP officers, and they brought in 200 SWAT team type RCMP. And they went host to host and literally even kick down doors that they, they weren't locked because people out in Alberta don't lock their doors. Kick them down, came in, armed, pinned people to the floor and took all their guns. And this is in the middle of a power outage. And there was no excuse for taking their guns. You're in a rural area where you better have guns because you got wolves and, and all kinds of mountain lions and everything. So these idiots actually went in there. Now it's a real big deal in Parliament because it's a little different system. Believe it or not, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which was based on the American Constitution, it's an inferior document because it doesn't say the rights come from the creator god but at least it templates the idea of that you have rights we haven't had a activist judges that have literally made your rights worthless with the constitution which is many of the things that have been done lately but uh, they're, they're getting those those rcmp officers that did this and the rcmp commanders they're going to get fried and flambéed and uh, Canadians, by the way, they just a few weeks ago withdrew the uh, gun registry system because so many Canadians buried their guns, they have such zero participation, they realize that they can't enforce the law. Canadians just gave them the middle finger and said, hell no, I'm not going to bring my guns into register them. You go and take a long leap off a short pier. And, uh, and so what people need to understand is it's not just happening here, it's happening in Uganda, South Africa, India, where they're doing biometrics for everybody on, Earth, on, on the planet to have an iris scan and then digital fingerprints, a biometric facial scan. This scheme by these globalists in one version or another is everywhere. It doesn't matter if it's Beijing, Shandong, Shanghai, Russia, Sochi, Georgia. It doesn't matter where it is. The globalist banksters are trying to crush humanity. And uh, they, they have these giant armaments with a population is stupid. Now, I, I'm going to make a statement here that people need a grasp. I don't care how many, you know, fancy, heavy, you know, bearcat tank, you know, armored personnel carriers they move or how many 50 caliber weapons. 
that I know that the Marines, the police officers, and the sheriff's officers are going to take their badges off or they're going to be, you know, get a command down structure under the sheriff. And it doesn't matter if it's a foreign invader or federalized police or anybody, they're not going to have martial law. So when I hear people say that you're going to have martial law, it will only happen under three circumstances. The American public has to agree to it. There has to be a perceived danger that if you don't agree to it, the dangers are so high whether it's an airborne plague or an EMP or some other thing, you know, attacked by from Martians, I guess. <laughs> and the third thing you have to have is that the idea that I think they're going to lose more by uh, by not participating with the government. And most people don't trust the government anymore. They know that locally, their sheriff, their neighbor that goes to the gun range with them, they know that their food supplies, even the government said if you have more than two weeks, they can steal it. They can apprehend your food supplies. You have more than two weeks of food in your larder, your pantry. So what we have to understand is that the, the ugly face of the, of the Draco reptilian managed or avatar government has taken off its mask and people are stealing the ugliness of transnational globalist Satanist rule. And they don't want this anymore. And it doesn't matter how many weapons they have, they cannot succeed. They can't. They might get the first veteran, but they, even in the state of New York, when they tried to uh, institute a law two years ago that they'd go host to host and pull veterans automatic weapons in the state of New York where where governor of New York Cuomo said it was a good idea to do this <clears throat> and of course Mayor Blomberg from New York City who's another nut uh, and the SWAT teams and the Special Forces Delta said please we beg you on bended knee with their flak jackets on ski masks and Kevlar helmets do not do this the first home will take away a vet the second home a lot of our guys, even with armor-piercing protective body armor on, are going home to see Jesus. They're not going home to see Mama. Well, well, Doctor, and they know that. Uh, uh, there's no helmet on the planet that will stop a common deer rifle slug. It doesn't. That right. helmet so, does not exist. Exactly. So what we have to understand here is, and I've, and I have these kind of weapons right in my place here in Vista, California, and I've had death threats, but I've stopped them cold because they know that I'm serious. What people need to understand is the idea of martial law is a wet dream of Satanists to try to run our government, and they want to frighten us into what I call the frightocracy. They want to make us fearful so we'll capitulate and bend over and take it. We're not. We're not going to take Obamacare. We're not going to take a cryptocurrency. We're not going to take pollution of the oceans and non-monitoring our food, air, and water. We're not going to take any of this crap anymore. We're not. We're mad as hell, and we're not going to take it anymore. And we are... Joshua Christians, which means when the giants are there, when God commands you to go into the, into the land of the giants, he said, God says, cut off their Achilles tendon. When their head gets close enough to the ground, behead them. And that's what we're going to do. Well, I think that uh, what the police are getting ready for is their battle with the gangs. They say that when... Uh, ah, that's get... crap. The, the gangs are totally... Clear. Listen, I worked with the Federal Center, the guys in Denver, and they're doing war game simulations. I found out from my sources that Long Beach, California, which is called Costco, which is a Chinese overseas shipping company, and they have it in, in Freeport, Bahamas as well, is shipping guillotines and all the automatic weapons and everything else you can imagine for the gangs because the gangs are, in a sense, proxies, just like Al-Qaeda, in America to terrorize the public. So if they say they're going to fight the gangs, that's more of a called Nimrod and his little techniques where you create a catastrophe and bring in his special forces to take them out. It's all crap. Welcome back. So um, I go a little bit over the edge sometimes. When I have a day like Valentine's Day, I get a little ranty. But I'm sure, you know, we, we, we try to speak what I call love and spirit words. We're trying to tell you, yeah, this is freaky. This is extremely bad. But God is our God. And I'll tell you right now, now's the time to really get down on your knees and pray to God. Uh, people should not get extra comfortable and think, well, that's really ugly. I watched it on the news. No, no, it's coming to your city, your town. And, of course, they're trying to try to make it look more like Attica and more like Brave New World than the 1984 because they want to make it a nice new world order. They don't want you to kind of vomit when you know what's coming. They don't want you to freak out and all of your hair stand up in your body. They don't want you to go and grasp your kids and hug them because you realized that troops are coming to separate you to different camps. They don't want you to realize that the Ice Age is going to drive people out of their homes in the north and stop food supply or that the food that you eat from the North Pacific may be so radioactive 
you're going to get a letter in the mail or a talk from your doctor who's going to call you, that test came back, Mrs. Such and Such or Mr. X, and I have bad news. You have three months to six months to live. You better get your affairs in order. And that's going to be, unfortunately, a very common occurrence here, even if we don't have a major catastrophe, but major ones are coming. The superquake's coming. War to the Middle East is coming. Conflicts with Russia and Japan and China and all these countries is coming. And not, not a, a period of peace, but it, we're, we're being degraded step by step. Even our children, I remember talking to the senior Air Force Academy psychologist where the top guns get trained in the early 80s when they brought in the, the Atari system for training air pilots in order to be able to use these systems for simulating warfare. They were afraid of turning them into what we call you know, cybernetic junkies, because every time you kill, you get a dopamine surge. Well, we have, you know, uh, 3D warfare games like Ghost Hunters and everything else out there in these games, and they're so realistic. These kids are addicted to electronic drugs. And then we have, you know, people don't, they, they think it's bigger than life, blockbuster movies, books, uh, television series. People aren't in reality anymore. They don't have any real hope. They have nothing. Even if they call themselves Christians, they're silent. They're they're getting milk and cookie type Christianity, not Delta Special Forces Christianity, where you have to hear and do what God says. And in an unpleasant time like this, before the fall of Santorini and, and Akatori, when the Thera was going to blow, when there was lots of prophetic warnings that was going to happen, the people didn't listen. And they don't listen now because they're empty. They're empty, hollow people, I call it. And the only way to fill you up is to fill you up with the love of the Most High God. Uh, John and Ann, it's desperate when you can't get people to listen and all they want to do is spit on you when you try to tell them the truth because it's so ugly, the truth. They don't want to believe it. They just walk away like, like, like bad children or they try to make ad hominem attacks because it's so nasty. They say, well, you've got to be psychotic for my sake. Well, S. Julian uh, reinforces what you're saying, Doctor, in his book, Trans Evolution, uh, that television has molded and created the reality for the majority of people, uh, not only in this country, for mo but much of the world, unfortunately. Exactly, and your comments. Well, we're certainly seeing the plagues. Uh, I just want to mention the H1N1. <clears throat> we uh, John had a, a had a guest on his show on Monday who said that he he was a doctor, and he said he'd never seen a middle-aged person who was healthy die of the flu in his entire practice, and he'd been practicing for over 20 years. And uh, that makes it all the more noteworthy that the H1N1 is attacking people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Right. Well, I just put. I put it in the Google News, for example, and it just even across Canada, we're getting deaths, 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 babies, young people, 20s, 30s. In other words, we're not talking about fragile older people that are in death's door or in their waiting room. We're talking about young, healthy, vigorous people are croaking. Oh, by the way, did you know that they don't count uh, people who die of the flu over, who are over 65 years of age? They're not included in the flu death statistics. Yeah, I know. They figure, well, you might you're good as dead anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're good as dead. <laughs> what happened this week was that there was a there was a case of the of a cat, uh, two cats, and they were in Calgary, Alberta, and they died. And the veterinary was pretty astute, I think, and he sent in their uh, samples, and come to find out, they died of the mnemonic form of H1N1. Now, they assume that the route of transmission was from the humans to the cat. He doesn't say what happened to the humans yeah. because yeah, he's well, a veterinary. People there are pretty are... close to their cats, so they're cuddling their cats. The cats sleep in their bed. So, yeah, now it means that we know that there's a repository that can be in animal populations like cats or ferrets. We know that the H1N1, H5N1 flu is in every bird population on the planet now, too, which means you've got mixing vessels in the wild or in domestic animals that now can carry a version of the virus, including a low-grade chronic infection, that could actually create new recombinants. That means future waves can be even more dangerous than the current one. Well, they can't even find where the H1N1 is, is, is the, they can't find the repository. Um, this new model. Well, they know there's form. presence. They found it in Japan and in China. So we have it at least, at least in two continents right off the bat. We know it's in Europe. So we know that the H1N1 flu is, is multi-continent, 
And we know that the virus is also showing enough genetic polymorphisms that it's going to evolve very quickly, especially if we can get a mixing vessel. If someone gets a relenza, a live vaccine, they're going to get other forms of flu, so they're going to have recombinants generated inside their body, so they should get a, they should be actually paid a salary by the bioweapons labs because they're a mobile unit creating new virus particles to cause death and destruction. Yeah, I find this very highly immoral to do that to people, to turn them into the mixing vessels for virus. Right. The, um, you know, the, the attenuated live virus is given a flu mist, that's the, that's the uh, vaccine that goes up your nose. And they're giving it to, from people from uh, 2 years old to 49 years old. And uh, those people are bound, well, even in the vaccine itself, they have the H3N2, which is also an attenuated live virus. So the people become a natural mixing vessel for the H3N2 plus the H1N1. Yeah. I mean, this is completely immoral. It really is. Uh, The latest news, of course, that uh, the situation has become even more serious with groundwater with this drilling. And then we talked about the number of billions of becquerels of radiation per cubic uh, meter present in the waters there. Uh, I think what's going to happen is in the next few months when the radiation levels start to get reported from uh, Berkeley and from other municipalities and from Hawaii, the population is going to freak out. They're going to finally reach the freak out level where they're realizing, Oh, damn. John Moore, Ann Morrison, Deagle, Chris Harris, we're telling the truth. And then, you know, on that word, by the way, I start choking. I'm thinking, I don't want to really say this, but I have to. And, you know, it's like um, Jeremiah said, you know, I wish I was silent, but the truth burns in my bosom. I have to tell them the truth. And what he was telling them is that the state of Israel is due for judgment. America, led by an apostate, satanically energized president, is a judgment against America. And when we won't speak out against it, when we won't get our Republicans to start impeachment because it's ugly and it's messy, when we have people that we need to support like Ted Cruz who wants to do something about this permanently, we need to support them. And we also, by the way, have to keep people first. We don't want austerity fascism like the Tea Party that says we got to, quote, balance the budget by cut off people's, you know, food supplies that don't have, you know, we call these food stamps, or they can't extend their unemployment benefits while they ship more and more industry because the Trans-Pacific Partnership, they've already calculated it will move another two to three million jobs in the next six years to other countries. And Obama smirks at us and tells the people of color or the people that are poor he's actually for them when he gives them catastrophic insurance and they can't find a doctor or hospital to take care of them. Like Covered California found they had to remove the doctor list. This is disgusting. And I I blame both parties. I blame the silence of the Republicans and the Christian organizations when they won't immediately file lawsuits, like Focus on the Family and many others, that they won't participate in Obamacare. States that said they won't participate in these exchanges because they actually have giant populations of religious people, not just Christians, but we call religious people of all types, pro-life Mormons, pro-life agnostics, even or atheists. And when I remember debating, I had a lot of people, believe it or not, were atheists that were pro-life. And we have an obscene government that's hell-bent. In fact, today they have a special on a Planned Parenthood to have a Valentine's abortion, believe it or not. That's scary. That's scary. That's a scary culture. That's poking in God's eye with a needle, asking for trouble. back so John I, I, one of the comments that like, repeatedly comes back and I even got an email recently and I quoted you from last week to say it doesn't matter what the crisis is get skill sets don't prepare for a specific scenario I always That's get right. a kick out of the of the insanity of what we call doomsday preppers and they contact me again because they wanted to do some other shows to have some Nacho uh, experts on the program and I say well, the problem is they need to actually start having shows of telling people to prepare skill sets not scenarios and they have people that insanely clomp onto one thing or another like you know I'm preparing for an avian flu I'm preparing for an EMP attack from Iran I'm, and I'm thinking you guys are nuts prepare just prepare for skill sets and what happens happens uh, and, oh, and by the fourth day, by the way, it doesn't matter what starts it. That's orchestrated yeah. from those producers. Those, those people that they feature, they don't get to, to do anything except what they're told to do. 
Right, and by the way, if they did prepare for multiple things, they're told to narrow it down to one thing, and then they can, right. uh, they caricaturize it too, so they try to make people seem foolish, like, ha, you see, you don't need to prepare. The government's already told you that's not going to happen. And then you, you had our economies in free fall. So Fukushima's poisoning our food supply in the next four to five years. If they don't stop Fukushima, it has major burps of radiation or we have something stupid like the attack the Bashir reactor on top of it, or we have a super quake in Japan, uh, most people realize eating your veggies will be a lethal uh, form of veggicide. You'll be dying of your veggies. And uh, I, I, don't, I just I can't get over the fact that the media thinks they can still lie to us and people will believe it. But the real answer comes with, as I say, love. Once they start to apprehend that we love each other, we love America, we love the Constitution, we love our Creator God most, and that all wisdom and love comes from Creator, He'll give us faith and hope, and then we'll apprehend the truth. Then we'll stop spitting at the people and trying to browbeat or attack the messenger because they don't want to hear it. Then they'll start actually getting skill sets. They'll learn how to operate a gun. They'll learn how to grow a greenhouse of food. They'll have food and water. They'll tell their neighbor, not worried about whether their neighbor doesn't want to talk to them again or want to their relatives diss them. You need to get over yourself out there. You need to get over yourself and your self-centered attitude. Would you rather that you be self-centered and worry about losing a friend or losing, having them lose their life? Would you rather that you have to shoot your neighbor because they won't listen and then when they come viciously to your home to try to attack you and your family? So are you ready? I don't think people are. I think it's that, that close, so it's important. I see Michelle is uh, coming here in the third hour. She has a question. What? I'm still on air. You're supposed to pretend I'm not here. I just need your signature. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> Just signature, man. Ah, uh, this is live radio too. I don't have a cake in the oven, but I do have. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I have my cake lady I'm visiting me. Cake tomorrow morning. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to talk about the jet stream. The jet stream is making a uh, a, a circle around the eastern half of the United States, and that circle is counterclockwise, which means that there's a huge low over the eastern part of the United States, and that's probably one reason that we keep getting these storms. In addition, just offshore of England, we have another high-pressure system, and England is getting battered, absolutely battered, with floods and winds. They're having 100-hour, uh, I think you said 108-mile-per-hour winds in, in southern England, and uh, according to the low pressure that's over it, it's a, a Category 3 hurricane. Now, they haven't designated it as a cyclone yet. That's what they do over there. They don't use the word hurricane. And all these things are extratropical. In other words, we would have expected such a, such a low, low pressure system to occur in the tropics and then move up into the, into the uh, northern hemisphere. And that's not what's happening. They, these storms are forming in the northern hemisphere. And I think that uh, the 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 reason for that is the is the uh, Gulf Stream that uh, John is John has talked about for the last yeah. how long has it been seven eight nine yeah, years? Yeah, well, I think it's that uh, it goes back about four and a half years to it, Doctor Zangari. Which, by the way, John, you referred me to Doctor Zangari uh, at the Frascati Institute, and then we later contacted Noah and other centers. And Dr. Zankari became very twitchy, he didn't want to come back on the air after he realized he was telling the truth and he, he was telling us the truth and, and uh, he was starting to get an international audience and I'm sure somebody tapped him on the shoulder and said, Dr. Zankari, we know where you and your family live, it would not be good for your academic career or your ability to breathe and have a pulse to continue talking. I'm certain that's that something like that happened. Went down. I, I'm pretty certain that's what happened. Right, and I'm sure that in both the academic career and the danger to his personal life, he was told basically shut up. The same way as Dr. Uh, Kai Vetter, the nuclear engineer at UC Berkeley, who was doing a fantastic job. I actually talked to him several times, and after talking to him, because at first he thought I was just Dr. Deagle, but didn't have a background in radiotoxicology, occupational and nuclear medicine, so he realized after a while, like, oh, crap. Deagle has an international radio show. He's going to bring on experts, like special prepper experts like John Moore, our nuclear expert Chris Harris, who's now on e, &E News. Every week they take and transcribe our program because the normal journalists in Japan, if they present this information or even ask tough questions, they go to the big house. They go to prison or worse. And um, I think what people need to grasp is that this situation we have is a convergent maelstrom of evil. And this year is the year when I expect 
them to push forward a peace treaty. I expect a peace treaty to, to forestall a nuclear war in the Middle East and an airborne attack by Netanyahu and Lieberman and Israel and Saudi Arabia against Iran. That right after the Sochi Olympics in the second or third quarter, I expect to see the crash of Japan. Japan literally, if it didn't restart those nuclear reactors within 60 days, it would collapse. The economy of the third largest power, which is only marginally behind China and America, would collapse. And that means we are not going to have a depression. We're in one. We're not going to have ecological collapse. We're having it. We're not going to have a future ice age. We're in one. It just hasn't reached this fullness of just how awful it's going to get. And so I tell people you need to prepare spiritually first with prayer and love because you're not going to hear this message. You're going to get, you know, plug your ears and scream and holler or get nasty. Or if you're really kind of out of your mind, you're going to threaten people like me or John, which is really unwise, actually. I stopped the uh, death threats, by the way, several years ago. They said, we have your IP address. We have the local police authorities coming. We track your GPS coordinates. And if you're stupid enough to come to my gated area, I'm a crack shot that trains with the Marines, and I'll take your head off before saying hello at 150 yards. And then they realize the call stopped because they realize, oh, my God, I didn't put in the equation that Deagle's, Deagle's nuts. No, I'm a Joshua Christian. And as it says in the Bible, if you do not defend your family, you're worse than an infidel. And also we need to defend America and every human being in every country, every unborn child, every elderly person in any country of any skin color, the coat of many colors, the odor court, the court for the Gentiles that the Hebrews were supposed to have with Moses and the tent of meeting and there. And what I see happening is we as a church, we as a people, America, the Republic, the shining city on the hill that John F. Kennedy talked about, we're not doing our job. We are not picking up medals as fast as we should at Sochi. We're not picking up medals in terms of intellectual capacity, new technology. We are letting our government be move all our industry. 50,000 industries in the last 20 years moved away from America. Why? And then they're going to push through with executive power to TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, and TTIP in Europe. We have finally bit the cyanide bullet. We're done. If America doesn't repent this year, America will be faced with the time of Jacob's trouble, and I call it Ephra America. Ephra America will end with a thermonuclear war, and most of our cities will rise with a mushroom cloud, and most of the people, the last thing they will scream as they see the bones in their hands is, where are you, Jesus? But they didn't call for Jesus when they should have called when they're in their city halls, in their churches, getting so many programs to get dizzy with the thick carpets, or in their courts, or in their medical offices, or in their legal uh, proceedings in court. No, they were silent then when they actually should have spoke against evil. And that's why this nation is marked for death if it doesn't turn around. And not just America, because with America it doesn't repent, the world can't be saved. That's a fact. If America doesn't repent, the world cannot be saved. Your comments, John and Ann. Well, Doctor, I agree, and then this, this fits right in with uh, the comments made by uh, Daniel Eschelin in the book I mentioned earlier. The, the uh, depopulation is one of the goals of the uh, the elites that run, run this planet. They need to destroy technology. They need to destroy uh, nine out of ten people that live on this planet, and they fully intend to do so. Yeah, and they're proceeding on schedule, by the way. <laughs> they may have a few little delays here and there, but don't worry. They have catch-up alternative programs. Well, I think and, that you know, uh, God, God is looking for the righteous person. I think it's like Sodom and Gomorrah when he went in and, and he said, Lot, you're righteous. And uh, Lot says, well, if I find one more, will you save them? And he said, yes, and he couldn't find them. So you want to be as righteous as you can. That's yeah, but he also right. said if you if you partake of being in the wrong place, even if you're righteous, you're going to partake also of the judgment. In other words, he had the right name. He was going to share the lot of the Sodom and Gomorrahites. Good yeah, name for him, eh? He left. That's right, he, he because he, ultimately his lot was with Abraham and God, yeah. not with the Gomorrahites and the Sodomites. Right. Well, uh, out there, enjoy Valentine's Day. Show love to your husband or your wife, your children. Show love to America. Pray for all the people on earth. And let God energize you. And remember, when we do God's will, we join our blood, our life, our wisdom with the most high. We share in his omniscience, omnipotence, and the rights and responsibilities to do something, not just be silent.